In this video, we will review how to conduct a search on SEBA. From the SEBA homepage, if you would like to search for sale, lease, or CMA's sales comparables, click on search commercial listings in the center. If you would like to search business opportunities, you can click on the blue button that says search business opportunities. Please see our business opportunities video for more information on how to conduct those searches. For now, we are going to focus on searching for sale, lease, and our CMA database. Once you click on the orange button, you'll be taken directly to the search map. From here, the first thing to know is that the search map itself does work as a geolocation filter. So as you zoom in on the map or move the map around, you are automatically applying a location filter. You can see this on the top that as I'm zooming in around the Seattle area, my numbers of properties and spaces will begin to reduce. You can continue to zoom down in into any area you wish and this, the map will automatically provide you with a satellite view. Here you can see the colored dots are now giving you an indicator of the asset classes for the property. The red dot has an O for office, the purple dot has an L for land, the green dot has an R for retail, the blue dot has an I for industrial, the yellow dot has an M for multifamily, and the orange dot has an S for specialty. You can continue to zoom down into the map as far as you'd like. It is fully integrated with Google Maps, so you'll get a, few, a full view of the property. You can even take the pegman and drop them directly down into the map to get a 360 view of the area. In addition to zooming around the map and moving it around yourself, there are also options to input your own radius or draw your own shapes. To draw a shape, click on draw shape in the left-hand corner. Place your cursor on the map, click and hold while you draw your shape. And then click apply shape back in the left-hand corner. And all of the properties and listings in that area will populate. You can draw as many additional shapes as you'd like by clicking on draw another shape, click and hold your cursor, draw the shape and click apply. When you're done with your shape, click on clear shapes and they will remove from your map and repopulate all of the properties in the area. You can also choose to draw a radius by clicking on draw radius in the left-hand corner. Place the center of your cursor for where you want the center of your radius to begin. Click on the area and release your cursor to see the outside radius. There are four little dots on the corner, south, east, and west, that you can place your cursor and drag in or drag out to increase or decrease your radius length. Click apply radius and the properties will appear in that area. You can click on draw another radius and also add as additional as many radius as you'd like. If you want to clear this, click on clear radii and they will remove from your map. In addition to using the map itself to place a location filter, there are location filters in the top banner. Click on location, and you'll see there's an option for location or street address, or you can choose to view the old SEBA submarkets. For locations, you can add in as many additional locations as you want, and you can do this by city, zip code, or county. So for example, I can put in King County, and you'll see the map will zoom out and highlight the King County area. I can also then continue to add in additional counties, such as Pierce County, and the map will automatically zoom out and highlight that area as well. Once you've added your location, you'll then move on to the type filter. From here, you'll select whether you're searching for sale, for lease, or you're looking for something that may have already sold or leased and is off market. Once you've selected the type of listing, you then need to select your asset class by either the space use or the property building column. These two areas are different from one another. The property building column is the primary use of the building, while the space use is going to be the asset class for the listing itself or what the space is actually used for. So some examples of how that could be different. Sometimes you can have a large office building where the primary use of the building of all of the top floors are office use. However, on the first floor, on the 
area where maybe pedestrians walk around on the sidewalk. There could be a space that's available that is a coffee shop or a, or a retail shop. Therefore, the space use of the listing is retail and the property building type may be office. We also see this on the reverse, sometimes with multifamily, where the primary use of the building is a multifamily building, but on the first floor, there may be offices available for lease. It's important to use the correct column here based off of what you're looking for, and it is most likely going to be that spaces for lease will be under space use, while spaces for sale will be under property building type because the whole primary building is for sale. You can use both columns together. However, we recommend that you go with the first column necessary and then build off of that and add additional filters based off your results. If you're ever confused about what you're searching for up here at the top, there's an eye indicator. And this one lets me know that I'm searching for retail space in all types of buildings. Once you've selected your type and asset class, you'll then go to the price and size. And for these, if you click on the boxes, they will expand and allow you to search um, through various filters and minimum and maximum ranges. Next is the more section, and this is going to provide more filters for you for things such as date ranges, building information, and if you're searching by sale, you'll also have investment information that you can search for as well. Down here at the bottom, you should always see an option to exclude pending or date or search by date pending as well. The last filter that's available to you is keyword search. Keyword search is recommended to be one of the solo filters used, and that's because what it's going to do is search through all of the listings, either for sale or for lease, depending on what you're searching for, for keywords located anywhere in that listing. So if you have something a little unique that maybe wasn't tagged as a subcategory for that listing, you might find it in the keyword search because the broker may have placed that information in the comment section. One last thing to note here is, as you've noticed, we may have we have not searched for our CMAs or our sales comparable database. So to do that search, you would go ahead and click on sold, meaning the listing is now off market and sold, and then come over to price and size, and you'll notice a new option that says only confirmed prices. By clicking on only confirmed prices, you will then be able to see the ones that our team has researched in the markets that we research our CMAs. Once you have conducted your search and narrowed down to your area, you'll notice your results will populate on the right-hand side. From here, you could go ahead and click on your listings to view the property. You can get property highlights as well as listing highlights. And you can also click on full page to see more information about the property, various listings, and any type of historical information we may have. To manage your results and also pull reports, please see our next video on how to manage your search results.